Welcome back to your Healing Buddy podcast with your host, Adina Godet. I am a licensed psychotherapist who enjoys having conversations all about the different areas of mental health. I pray that from every episode, someone takes at least one nugget and is able to apply it to their personal life. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy. Hey, you guys. Welcome back to your Healing Buddy podcast with me, your host, Adina Godet. I have a special guest here. Her name is Desiree. She is a content creator from Virginia, right? Yep, yep. Yes, yep. yes, yes. And congratulations on 1,000 subscribers. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations <laughs> to her. Um, I have her here today just to talk about some things that have gone on with her life, whether it is life transitions. She has many life transitions that she's gone through. And I kind of want her to talk about it because I know a lot of people have dealt with some of the things that she's dealt with. Mm -hmm. So I just want to talk about it and see like how she got through some of those things, how she was resilient, how she, you know, just came about, you know, coming here today and being who she is today, how that made her. So thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. 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 So tell the people who you are. Okay. Are you? Well, my name is Desiree. As she said, um, I am from Virginia. I was pretty, I grew up in Virginia. So I've been in Virginia mostly all my life. I just moved to Charlotte last year, February of 2023. Um, I had got a job opportunity out here, so I decided to, you know, I had no kids. I wasn't tied down to anybody. Okay. So I was like, why not? You know, right. saying, why not come out here? So came out here and um yeah, it's just yep, yeah, that's that's how it's going. <laughs> okay. Well, how was it growing up in Virginia? What part of Virginia? Um, so I grew up in Chesapeake, Virginia. Mm -hmm. If anybody knows seven five seven. She got a rainbow <laughs> town. <laughs> So yes, I grew up in Chesapeake. Well, mm -hmm. I actually was raised, grew up, I was born in Norfolk, Virginia, but okay. then the latter half of my years, I was in Chesapeake, Virginia. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How was it? Like, what was your experience like? Um, so it was interesting. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> um, so the, when I was living in Chesapeake, um, I was going through a lot, I would say like emotionally and financially. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I did stay with my aunt for a while mm -hmm. in that last year until I moved up here. Um, that was interesting because me and her had never lived together. Ooh, so and they say you don't know somebody until yes. you live with them, right? So us being <laughs> in the same space was not it wasn't working out. Okay. <laughs> it That's understandable. Out. So eventually I was like, you know, I think it's about that time. Oh. I kind of just, you know, venture out and move. And I know mm -hmm. I didn't want to stay in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let me start searching in Charlotte. Okay. Yeah. So was Charlotte always a place you wanted to try? Or where you what other places did you, you know, want to look at? So Charlotte had been on my list mm -hmm. for for a while, actually. I would say since about 2017. Oh, okay. Charlotte that was had good. been on my list, mm -hmm. yeah, to come. Like, I remember just, like, researching Charlotte and Texas. Okay. Another place mm -hmm. I want to go. Um, and I had visited here a few times since then. Mm -hmm. So every time I came here, it just felt like oh, home. Like, yeah. I could go anywhere else, but something about coming here just felt like home. Oh. Like, it's a nice balance of, like country and city right and, you know, <laughs> we're still so in the like, south yeah <laughs> so i was like okay i, I could get used to this so, oh yeah, okay yeah. well good okay so i understand that right like always visiting somewhere and you're like oh i just want to move like i just want to you get the vibe but i've also noticed that when i go somewhere and i say that i'm like mm, i'm on vacation now so you know sometimes you get a different yes. feel from being on vacation to actually moving yes. so what okay so after you have moved now what's mm -hmm. the difference between you being on vacation mm -hmm. vacationing in charlotte and then like actually living here like what what would you say is like the difference mm -hmm. and again what's some lessons that you feel like you have learned from moving here that's a good question mm -hmm. <laughs> i would probably have to say because you're right when you go somewhere it's like okay you all you would say like oh i can live here but you're right, right. it's like you're on vacation mm -hmm. um i would probably have to say like this was one thing i would say like I prayed about it. That was the number one thing. Amen. And so I feel like what makes it different mm -hmm. is that I got confirmation from God. Like, mm -hmm. okay, this is an okay move. So right. that to me already, that to me was like the number one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say since moving here, I mean, like, it feels like vacation, but at the same time, it don't. Like, I okay. feel like it's like. Because you got to work. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> You're not just. Still, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, so I feel like. um I would have to probably say, yeah, just the fact that I prayed about it and mm -hmm. God was like, that's what kind of made the difference. Well, I'm glad you got confirmation because we can't do anything without him. When we start doing things by ourselves, we have to like continue to do the things Girl. outside of his will if we do it without and him. And it don't work out. It don't. <laughs> and you're going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> <Very upset. laughs> but, okay, so another thing though, you did move here by yourself. Like you say, you don't have any kids and you know, the things wasn't working out back home. So you're like, let me just, let's go. You prayed about it and let's go. 
So being here alone, though, mm -hmm. what would you say are some of the challenges that you did face? So I would definitely say when I first moved, like upon moving here first, I was like, oh, I'm in a new area. Right. Like, oh, this is about to be. Uh, live, we live. Live. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's like, as soon as I got here, the loneliness like sunk in. Right. So like, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anybody here. Right. I had no family here, mm -hmm. nothing. And so I would say that was a big challenge at first. And the fact of like somebody had told me before you move, especially if you're alone or whatnot, mm -hmm. before you move to a different state or whatever, find a church home and find like a community of believers mm -hmm. because that was like a challenge of mine. Mm -hmm. So when I got here, the loneliness, then I'm seeking out other things. Right. And I don't have a church. So now that's hard to go. I'm like, where am I supposed to look to find right. a church? And so that kind of was like a struggle of mine. And so I really kind of like distance myself, I would say mm -hmm. like from God or yeah. whatever. And so with me distancing myself, mm -hmm. being outside of his will, right. <laughs> a lot of things, me getting into relationships I shouldn't have been in, mm -hmm. like a lot of things yeah. happen and it just... So you felt like you were just looking for love in different places yes. instead of going back to God, the yep. one who even told you to come in exactly. the first place. Going back to the source. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? I'm I'm glad you said that because again, like I said, she's a content creator. So one of your videos was about, you know, doubting, mm -hmm. doubting, you know. And of mm -hmm. course, sometimes when God tells us to be obedient with something, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's going to be hard. Let's be honest. Sometimes it don't even mean that we want to do it. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> but then when we get into it and we have those struggles, mm -hmm. How do you feel like you you've gotten through that now? You know, of course, like you said, you might have went outside of his will. You might have did certain things mm -hmm. and not had the church home. But what are you doing now to kind of get back into that? You know, in so his? I will say um, it's funny because God had to with the relationship that I was in, because honestly, I feel like I probably still would have kept mm -hmm. going with that. Right. Um, but I found out some things with him. OK. And so I feel like that kind of started like. You're like, okay, I need to kind of like red flags just go like the red flags are already kind of there. Woo! You know and they're gonna show up, they're gonna know, be real red. You kind of want to see like how red can yeah. it be? Like, uh, you know, you're like, like, I didn't really see that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like I would say now, like I'm trying to, like I have been going to church more, Good. like so I'm going to church on Sundays more. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that's like. I mean, to some people, I mean, a little small, but I'm, like I said, every Sunday, I'm making sure I do that. And right. then, like, I'm making sure, like, before, like, in the mornings, like, before I'm even talking to anybody, mm -hmm. I'm either watching a sermon, doing a devotion, or having some form of prayer. Because, like I said, I have noticed with that video that I did release about the doubt with God, mm -hmm. it was like, it was me. Like, mm -hmm. I was the one who distanced. You okay. Know so, that, me being in those situations, mm -hmm. and of course, when you're mixed with people who aren't believers right. or whatever. You can start to pick up their views on certain things or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, God is real all along. It's just, I'm picking up their doubts and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had to distance myself from those things. It was so you, hard. <laughs> and, and it is hard. Oh my gosh. Especially, they say, you know, it's crazy. I used to be the person that would be like, oh, birds of a feather don't flock together, right? I used to always like when I was younger okay. and then I had to realize, no, not you're not necessarily flocking together, but at, sooner or later, you're going to adopt something or Absolutely. even with being open minded, you could be open minded and mm -hmm. say, look, you do that. I do this. But sooner or later, it's mm -hmm. going to mesh. You're going to even yep. your thoughts, even if you don't actually do the action, your yep. thought is going to be, well, that's OK. Like, exactly. yeah, I get it. Yep. OK. Yep. Yep. So now do you feel like you are uh, trying to find that community? I am. So I am a tenant. Matter of fact, the church you introduced me to. Ah, yeah. union. Yeah. So, okay, good. I've been going there mm -hmm. um, recently. And so, yeah, I am trying to kind of like, like, I know this Sunday I'm going to start like the growth track so I can actually start Aww. being more involved and get a community. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So with the growth track at the, at the church. So what she's talking about is um in Concord, right? It's right outside of... um. The Concord Mills Mall, I think it's down the street from mm -hmm. there, outside of Charlotte. Um, there's a church called Union Church that we went to together one time. Um, so they do have different programs because it's a bigger church. So they do have different programs for people to get out in the community and different groups, whether it's mom groups, grow mm -hmm. track. So with that, do you already know like kind of what you're going to do or what's your goal? What is your goal? Girl, <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, you just go in and I'm you want to see. I'm going to just go and then see because I know they got different groups. Yeah. I don't know what group I want to be a part of yet. I'm going to just go and just at least take that step. Good. And then you know, from there, I'm going to see like what Aww, else going on. I like that. Yeah. That's good. So let me ask you this. With mm -hmm. going back to your video, right? Mm -hmm. One th one key thing you said was okay. Maybe in the video you might you might have been confused and been like, well, God, what you know, ask it, questioning God, like mm -hmm. why why what are you doing? Why mm -hmm. would you bring me here to kind of feel like you left yeah, me because of course yeah. he never leaves you Absolutely. but we will feel as if okay you Absolutely. left me right? right but now it sounds like you have a different perspective yeah. you know and you're saying 
I'm taking accountability. It was me that, you know, that kind of act up, right? So would you say you're going to update that? Like even do an update on your doubt video? That's that would funny because I actually was thinking about that yesterday. I was like, um, I am going to do an update on it. But I am, I'm going to still be honest because it's like, like I said, I know it was me who yeah. left him. Mm -hmm. um, but I still somewhat, like I still want to experience like that intimate relationship. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like I haven't really got that yet mm. to really know without a doubt, without a doubt, like mm -hmm. God is God. So right. I am, so I am going to like be honest about that. Like I'm still am kind of in that phase, but That's yeah, good. I'm going to keep pushing on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me ask you this too, mm -hmm. even with saying this, because of course, one of the things that I always say when I'm trying to undoubtedly say something, sometimes Sometimes it's our anxiety because God has shown mm -hmm. us plenty of times that he's God, right? Yeah. And it's just us again that's like, mm, yes. well, what about this little part right here? Yes. Like you did this in the big scheme of things, but what about this one little negative right. thing that I had to go through, right? Right. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things that you feel like God has got you through, you okay. know, that you you can say, okay, this is why I have an example of God, okay. God is who God is. I could probably say a few things, honestly. And that's okay. what it's just like. <laughs> I know God is, I just got to keep pushing. No, but, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like, even when it came to moving here, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. the job offer that I had, um, I was late to it. I could, for some reason, it was, the interview was a Zoom interview. Okay. And they sent the link. I saw the link the night before. <laughs> right, you were The next rare. day, <laughs> where is the link? It's gone. Yeah, I, I'm like, oh Email my God. is gone. <laughs> <laughs> where the email so goes? Is my trash? <laughs> Is it my jump? Right. And it was in the jump. Like, <laughs> Where'd it go? <laughs> so I'm like, how, when, how did he even get there? Right. So now I'm already late to my interview. I'm mm -hmm. like 10 minutes late to the interview. Right. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm probably not going to get this job. Like I'm late because one thing that the manager said at the end of the interview was like, we look for people who are on time. Mm. Dependable. I said, oh. So you already were like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I had a bad, you felt like you have a bad first impression. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm not going to get this. And so the fact that God came through for that and then with my apartment that I have now here um is no way my you, you know you said, uh -uh. oh listen here people you think just because it's the south is cheaper but in charlotte <laughs> in charlotte <laughs> it's not. oh my it's, it's almost like I'm in Atlanta right. oh my gosh it's crazy yeah. and they want you to make two to three times mm -hmm. the rent so I didn't make three times the rent right so I'm just like ooh and the guy at the time it's so funny because the lady that was there at the time, she is looking through my pay stubs or whatever. And first she tells me I'm good mm -hmm. because I had just received a bonus check. So that's what really put it off. Right. But then she's like going back and she's like, um, I don't know. Like, you know, and the thing is I had got a letter saying I got approved for it. Mm -hmm. But then she was like, oh, that doesn't really mean anything. And well, why would they the send me a letter <laughs> and say I'm approved for something I'm not approved for? So she's like, I have to actually go back and recalculate wow. your income. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm really mad about this. When they actually right. really look at the numbers, I'm not going to get this. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, I think they let her go. Um. <laughs> Um, not too long after that, so wow. another guy took over, mm -hmm. and he was—he just went off the first thing she said. Hey. He said the income was good, you good. Let's just go ahead and move forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that was nothing. Nothing like, but God. Nothing. That could have been nothing. Nothing but God. Because again, like, you're like, mm. and it's crazy when God. Again, it, that's the part of being obedient and having mm -hmm. faith. I think obedience and faith go hand in yeah. hand. Because again, a lot of the times he's telling us to be obedient, but he is going to test you to see if the faith is there too. Because if he's like, if I can trust you with this, That's I can it. trust you with bigger. Yeah. Right. So That's he, it. and sometimes I'm like, God, why, stop bringing me up through all these okay. tests to get to, I get <laughs> it. Good God. <laughs> have to go get it. Right. I'm tired. I, oh my God. Take me off the strong right. soldier list. Okay. Please. <laughs> right. But again, even in that, it was like, mm, you had room for doubt and you did it. You you may not have had like mm, okay, but it, it wasn't over. Right, it wasn't over, right. and it ended up coming around and saying, "Oh, okay, mm -hmm. God, you told me to do okay. it. I did my part, and it still happened." It so still happened. That's good, yes, girl. So okay, so I know another thing. You know, mm -hmm. another situation that you might even may have doubt about or had doubt about before mm -hmm. is I know you your mom has passed, right? Mm -hmm. What age did your mom pass? So I was. 20 i was gonna be 21 in two months wow so, yeah, I was 20 years right old. before you turned 21 yes. she had bought me like a little wine glass and everything that mm. had like 21 customized on little glass for when i turned 21 but yeah oh I know, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh okay 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 <sighs> so even going into that subject okay mm -hmm. you know with the passing of your mother mm -hmm. first of all you're a woman so that's already you know uh, 
usually mothers and daughters, you know, they have a certain bond that Absolutely. mothers and sons have differently. You Absolutely. know, everybody can be close, but they have a different bond, yeah. right? And so you had her for 20 years, almost 21 years. Mm -hmm. How was that losing her? And what, and you know, what did she pass from? So losing her, I think when it first happened, my mind hadn't really registered that, mm -hmm. okay, well, not, no, we're not about it. <laughs> so I don't think my mind had really registered that I had lost her because at the time, my aunt, she came from a different state, her sister. Okay. And so she had to be back to work, mm -hmm. you know, really, like we had, so everything wow. had to be done within that week. So my mom like passed the funeral. on a Monday, the funeral was on a Saturday. That Saturday? Yes. <laughs> you didn't even, you weren't even able to process. No, like I was sometimes like, I would just be sitting there and just like, I didn't want to get up. And she was like, come on, we got to get up. We got to get the flower arrangement. Like, girl. And I'm just like, give me a second. I'm tired. Right. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to process, like I'm in this house. Right. And, you know, my mom. So you were still living like, in yeah. the house that you mm -hmm. grew up in or with her? Yep. I was still in there. So I'm just like, I'm tired. And then at the time we were taking care of her nephew because mm -hmm. um, he had some like, you know, mental issues and stuff. Okay. So I'm, I'm having to get him ready for school and iron his clothes wow. and all this stuff and pick up this stuff. So it's just, I didn't really process it when it first happened. Mm -hmm. But over time, I think after the funeral, when mm -hmm. I got home when it hit you. is when everything hit. Like the mm -hmm. house is quiet. It's just me and my twin brother. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just not like, all the, uh, come on, exactly. let's do this. She's gone now. Mm -hmm. she's, she's gone back to her hometown. And so it's just like, I go in the bathroom. I see my mom's toothbrush mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I'm just like, like, this is really reality right. now. Like, right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And even, well, what, well, what did she pass from? Was it random? Was it spontaneous? Or was it something it was built up and you kind of knew was going to happen? No, oh, I wow. did not expect this at all. Wow. Like, and it's so funny. I was looking back on my phone recently, mm -hmm. just through old videos through my Dropbox and looking at old videos. Mm. And I saw a video because it was the night it happened. And I was, I like, mm. I've always wanted to do YouTube stuff. So I'm yeah. recording me like making food in the kitchen or whatever. And I, wow. that just brought back a lot of like sex. That was the actual night that she had passed. Right. But no, it caught me off guard. Um, I never expected it. I just know one night, like I'm up watching TV and before I go to my room, she has like this cough, but it, it sounds like an unusual cough, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking nothing of it. I'm right. thinking, you know, the window is open. Maybe it's just like an air drift, whatever. Right. So um, I'm thinking that I go to my room and next thing I know, not maybe like 10 minutes later, mm -hmm. my nephew at the time, like I said, she was taking care of, he was in mm -hmm. the living room still. And he was just like, Ray, Ray, your mom, she's, she's trying to walk outside. She can't breathe. And I'm just like. So I run out to the living room and I see her like outside, like she's by the door and she's trying to like grasp for, mm. grasp for air or whatever. Wow. And then she comes back in and she just passes out. And I don't know how to perform CPR. Right, so now right. I'm like, okay, let me just call 911. Mm -hmm. My brother though, he knew mm -hmm. how to do it. So I call him from his, I'm like, yo, like mom is not breathing. Like, right. You got to give her CPR or something. Right. He tries, but it's not working mm. or whatever. And so, um, Finally, 911 come and I could feel like things were kind of, I could see that she probably wasn't responding or waking up because when she was in the ambulance, you could see them doing the thingy through the mm. glass window, the trying to resuscitate right. or whatever. Um, but yeah, so she, it wasn't too long after, maybe a few days after they ran some tests and they was like, you know, she's brain dead and they feel like it was because of a heart attack. Okay. And so mm -hmm. she was only like, what, 52, wow. 53, something like that. But they was like, surprisingly, the younger, the older you are, I think he said the easier it is to like come back from her versus the younger, like her age. I would have never known yeah, that. I was like, that's weird to me. But yeah, so, yep, she ended up severe oh, wow. heart attack. Oh, my right. gosh. Girl. Yeah. So, okay. Now let me come from a therapist perspective yeah. too. Cause you know, okay. 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 <laughs> Cause when you're saying that I'm like, okay, one, it was spontaneous, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything that you knew she had any heart problems Never or you cancer. Right. And, and yes, it's hard regardless, but I think sometimes it's easier to prepare when you mm -hmm. know somebody you is know. sick mm -hmm. and, but it was random. random. So one, that's just, oh my gosh, that's shocking. And that's so much of a transition. Yeah. Right. And, but then you're saying that you were actually in the house. Mm -hmm. You were the one to call the 911, mm -hmm. the ambulance, um, try to help her, of course, called the brother. So during this time, mm -hmm. you're actually witnessing the event and you're yes. having direct exposure to the event. Yes. So it's not even just grieving. It's actually traumatic. Trauma. Exactly. Like 
So yeah. a lot of people that are grieving, they forget, like, if you are actually in the event, mm -hmm. it can be traumatic for absolutely. you. And you can have PTSD from that, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, but yeah. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Yes, because I was like, I could see her eyes. Like, she's just like, right. you can tell she's just about to be gone. And mm -hmm. I'm just telling her, like, while my brother's going to see you. And it really hit him, too, the mm -hmm. hardest. Because he's the one trying to give CPR. Mm -hmm. and to him, so he, he might feel like, like he didn't save exactly. her. Exactly. He he told me that one night. He got so drunk one night. And he just came in my room and he was just like, you know, I feel like everything is my fault. Mm. You know, I didn't have a chance to save her. And I really tried. And it was just like, I didn't know what to say to yeah. that. Because I'm like, you know, it's not your fault. You know, yeah, We can say that all day long, but if that's what they feel. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And I just remember telling her like, you know, like, I love you, mom. I love you, mom. It's going to be okay. It's going right. to be okay. But yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. Whew. Okay. Okay. Sure. No, that's a lot. So going skipping the funeral going mm -hmm. after that so like you said the house is more quiet your mm -hmm. brother and your nephew are still there or are yep. they trying to make arrangements for like your nephew like how did that happen were you taking care of him so actually you're right my nephew his dad who was very absent in his life mm -hmm. um wind up probably because he felt like money i don't know because he gave him back after a few weeks but he decided he wanted to take him, mm. and uh, my nephew hated that at the time. But yeah, yeah. he decided he wanted to take him. So yeah, it's just me and my brother at this time. In okay. The house. Mm -hmm. So how'd you go through that? How'd you even <laughs> in now? Because of course I will talk about now. You know what's mm -hmm. the difference and how you kind of transitioned and how you processed it mm -hmm. from? Because right now, how are you? How old are you now? Thirty. I'm thirty-one now. Thirty-one. So mm -hmm. that was. 10 years Almost ago. 10 years ago. Yep, 10 years ago. It was 10 years ago. Ten and so ago. you got to think about it, you know, from a decade, literally a yes. decade. Um, how has the transition from grieving then to grieving now? So I would say, like, then um, I was drinking, like, heavily. Mm -hmm. like, and then, you know, I'm 21 now. Right. Two months now. You said so, I can go get it. <laughs> I can go get go to the uh, store. I don't have to ask anybody. Honestly, and, mm -hmm. and to be honest, I didn't realize until some time later that mm -hmm. I was doing that as a coping mechanism. Yes, yes. But at the time, I'm just feeling like, well, I just want to drink. I'm gonna keep drinking. And like, that's the only thing that's helping me get it out my mind, exactly. or not think about it as much. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I could recall so many times where I'm getting drunk in front of friends, and I just yeah. start talking about it. Yeah. Like, you know what? That's so embarrassing. No, I mean, <laughs> they say so. What they say? So uh, drunk thoughts and sober thoughts, yes. but you're just not saying it. Uh -huh. So I would get, I mean, drunk, drunk mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, honestly, that too, when I think about it, that was my coping mechanism mm -hmm. then. I would say now, no, I'm not drinking that. I would say now, yeah. I did try therapy early this year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have to find a new therapist. Okay. <laughs> um, but so yeah, therapy. Um, and then now, if I'm being honest, I don't think I try to think about it too much mm -hmm. now. Like, but do you feel like it's an avoidance? Because again, let's be honest, time does heal things too, right? Mm -hmm. And so not necessarily that, oh, I'm just not thinking, is it just you're not thinking about it or on purpose? Or is it because like, oh, okay, time has, I'm healing. I feel like I'm, Mm -hmm. I've coped with it a little bit more to where, okay, if I think about it, I'm okay with thinking about it. But if not, it's just, you know, because time has passed. I would say it's avoiding it. Okay. It is very much avoiding it. I don't think it's something, like I said, this is actually the first time I'm actually like talking, talking Aww. about it. So We have an exclusive. <laughs> yeah. We have an exclusive. <laughs> she said it's the first time she's actually talking about this. See, look at the Lord. Lord, we, we, look, hold on. Let me pause for a second. Let me pause for a second. We're going to ask the Lord right now yes. to let whoever this, you know, whoever this needs to reach, okay? to touch them, you know, as it's touching her because she is just now getting this out and I'm yes. so happy that she can do this here and feel safe to do it. So. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, but avoiding it. Mm -hmm. Yes, avoiding it. Um, But I will say the thing is like as you get older and you experience different things like me moving out here. Yes. It's like, it's those times when it really hits and mm -hmm. it's just like man you feel like, like you don't have any guidance exactly like mm -hmm. and i knew she would be a person i could be like she would probably come here all the time and come see right. me hang out with me mm -hmm. whatever and probably so, helped you yes, and move and absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so that's been it's is knowing that i'm going to go through certain reach certain mm -hmm. milestones in my life and yeah. she's not going to be there to right you know, mm -hmm. you know so so do Okay, so do you feel like since she has passed, you've looked for like motherly or nurturing figures since then, like during this ten years? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. I and and then sometimes I feel like I'm picking the wrong mm -hmm. people. <laughs> you <laughs> said, "Hold on now," because I just desire it so yeah. much, and I can be an open book. And sometimes mm -hmm. I will just start 
spilling stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And sometimes I'm realizing not every like older figure it shouldn't mm-hmm. be that motherly figure in my life. And I think too, that's what I feel like that's with anybody, right? Like whether it's with friends, mm-hmm. with when it's with mentors, mm-hmm. or just any relationships, yeah, <laughs> especially. <laughs> but I think too, I think all of it's the same when you think about it, relationships as a whole. Yeah. Um, how are we um going into the relationship? Mm-hmm. Are we love bombing are we just like oh i i feel this chemistry we yeah. buy where you know i'm i feel good with this Absolutely. person whether it's friends or again like i said mentors yeah. um relationships and we just get happy because we feel like the void is yes. you know just feel it filled at that moment right yes. and then we're like oh hold on i don't really know them <laughs> like, no, like... Say, hold on now <laughs> We good, and that's okay. I think sometimes we also have to put people in certain places. Like, Absolutely. you know, are you a person I can come to for this? Because right. you actually are open minded and you have the wisdom. Right. But yep. or, or again, am I just telling you this? And you actually, you know, are using it either against me or you don't even know how to right. handle it. You don't or, know how to handle it. Right. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I would say now, the closest person I probably had, like my dad's uh, wife. Mm-hmm. She's I call her my good. bonus mom. So she's probably like the mm-hmm. closest. Like. I have her, so it's like I don't yeah. need to have to keep looking. Oh, that, like, that's good. Yeah. So, do you have y'all always had a relationship? Well, I don't know how long your dad has been married to her. Mm-hmm. How long has he been married? I want to say it's been like six or seven years. Okay, good. So, yeah, I've had her for some time. Oh, <laughs> and so do you feel like you clicked automatically, or was it something you had to grow into? Like, were you ever a person that was like, mm, she's not a mama, so, or, you know, because some people do. <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. Yeah. So, you know, but, or, or was it something, well, okay, she's good. I yeah. Mean, let me, you know, I get feel to know like her. With her, we clicked automatically. Oh, there good. wasn't really like, mm-hmm. From when I first met her, she was very, she just seemed very like genuine mm-hmm. as a, and just like, you could just come to her about yeah. anything at any time. Cause she has daughters herself. Mm-hmm. So I feel like she really kind of understood like, yeah. you know, where I was coming from and whatnot. But yeah, she was from the moment. Like, oh, yeah. That's so good. So you just yep, came in and meshed. Her. Oh, I yep. love that. I'm so happy you have her and you, you know, have her as a mom yeah. and a mentor. Yep. So that's good. Yep. I love it. Okay. So. Like, what about celebrities? Cause I know sometimes people, mm-hmm. again, obviously in reality, we want that mentor and motherly figure, that nurturing figure. But mm-hmm. do you feel like you ever even looked up to the wrong celebrities or even or even the right ones? Like you were like, oh, okay, like this one is good and I can use this as like a motivation to help mm-hmm. me in certain times that I feel lonely or feel like I do need that motherly advice. Yeah. Honestly, I've, I would say no. Like good. I haven't really, yeah, no, I don't think I've looked up no to any um mm-hmm. so like, well that's good so i i think too again from a therapist perspective <laughs> i'm gonna look at it and say that's actually a good thing too okay. that you know because a lot of people they'll look for that mm-hmm. in anywhere again mm-hmm. personally but they'll look up to the wrong people in social mm-hmm. media because they're like oh anybody who's giving advice is like you said older right. and mm-hmm. looks as if they're wise yep. not everybody's wise and then they're following the wrong path or Absolutely. just doing copying and mimicking okay. yep. you know mm-hmm. it's so good yeah, oh yeah i have to say no yeah. <laughs> she was like, uh-uh, I'm good. She said, I'm the celebrity content creator. Okay. okay. <laughs> but okay, good, good, good. So with therapy, what would you say your experience is? Um, I know you have to look for another one, but yes. what was your experience with therapy? So um it was interesting. <laughs> oh Lord, when she used that word, <laughs> she said it's interesting. <laughs> I will say, because that was my first time doing therapy. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what mm-hmm. it is that I'm supposed to be like expecting from mm-hmm. it. So to me, but what did you go into it thinking? I, when I look at movies mm-hmm. and stuff like that, the way the right. therapist is is kind of they tell like not that they, it's like they offer suggestions. Mm. Oh, okay, this was me. Let's try to do this or try mm-hmm. or something like yeah. that. And I didn't really get that from mine. It was more mm-hmm. so like I'm talking to a friend. And she was like, girl, he did what and what? Mm-hmm. No. And then it'll be over. And I'm just like, I don't got no homework. No. Oh. <laughs> so, what, okay, let me ask this too. Is that something that y'all talked about? Like, Because I know like, I know mm-hmm. with my clients, whether it's new clients or clients mm-hmm. now, some people need different things. And okay. she might have been doing that to you and you might have needed something else when mm-hmm. other people also need, some people do need the, mm-hmm. oh, okay, like somebody who is a friend, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody who is giving that type of relationship. But during the intake, when you first met her, like, was that something you actually said? Like, oh, well. I don't know what I'm expecting, but I do want homework or I do mm-hmm. want this. Is that something she's so talking about? So I actually about? did mention that to her oh, when I first that. met her on okay. the first one. Um, but it's almost like sometimes you just forget like mm-hmm. when it came to our sessions mm-hmm. a lot. So, or sometimes I feel like I was, I'm researching stuff. I'm like, hey, how about like we try like, 
Stop. Stop. Like, I looked up this. Maybe this is what. They're like, can we try? Like, yes. Eventually, like so, I was just like. Well, after that, I would have been like, well, she need homework then. Because if like, she's looking at homework on it, she comes to me, I need to go ahead and say, this is what your assignment is, at least to the next right. time. Right. So yeah. I'm just like, I will say, like, I'm not going to knock her completely because she did help me with certain things. Like, yeah. The relationship I was dealing with. But we never really got to. The deeper childhood yes. root. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We never got to that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I would say, too, she might have just been meeting you where you were, right? Because yeah. at that moment, you were dealing with a relationship mm -hmm. and dealing. So, okay, yes, we're yeah. going to say that. But I think, too, let's be honest, a lot of times stuff we're dealing with in relationships have to do with the root of yes. what's going on, like our attachment styles. Like, yes. you could, and I'm not saying this is you, but I'm saying, like, usually when people lose parents, they could either be avoidant because they're like, uh uh, everybody everybody that I come close mm -hmm. to I could lose right mm -hmm. so some people could start being avoided and then that could affect their relationships because mm -hmm. they're avoided they're not emotionally present mm -hmm. which I have a video on that y'all <laughs> okay <laughs> but yeah it's like being emotionally unavailable because they don't know how to process that or express that mm -hmm. or they could be more anxious like attachment style and be more clingy because they're like no I want to keep you know all yeah, my and relationships and like, keep them close yeah mm, yeah and so but again in that relationship like you had said I know you only said a little bit but um you you were like mm, let me look at the red flag let me keep looking let me uh, oh another red flag you know I so, love him. Yeah. Ah, you get, why? you're like hold on now I just love him so much he couldn't dare do I can let it go right and then you're like dang but I'm enabling like I'm enabling now and mm -hmm. you know in this relationship he's not changing like mm -hmm. this is just him and I have to accept yeah. that and kind yeah. of move forward and so but but again even with talking like in therapy when you do find another therapist what I would say is say that up front like okay. I need to really yes there's certain things that's going to happen and you need to talk about right then because it's going to be recent mm -hmm. you got to process it mm -hmm. but also try to relate it back to what may what part of my childhood is actually coming out of me mm -hmm. or what what inner child part of me mm -hmm. what age is coming out right now what am i showing what's okay. my behaviors okay. you know so i think that would be a good suggestion okay i'm definitely gonna do that yeah. absolutely like I'm, I'm, I'm here for a reason <laughs> <laughs> Like, cause that, like, let's be honest, yes. we're going to get to a point in therapy where you do maintenance, you only go uh, twice a month or once a month, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's just that, it's just keeping up with it. But mm -hmm. in the beginning, you do got to dig deep and it's hard. Absolutely. And sometimes it's hard. Yeah. It's super hard to do that when you're like, mm, I ain't really talked about it and I've been avoiding it and now I got to actually be vulnerable and mm -hmm. talk about this, you know, because we're afraid of what's going to come out of it. Absolutely. She did mention that to me. She was like, um, cause I, when she was just asking questions about me, like I told her like, you know, my mom passed. Right. Like and so she was like, um, okay, your mom passed. Like, what? And then when she asked, I was about to cry. So she's like, okay, I can tell that's just stuff, like something you haven't really like you know, mm -hmm. dealt with the heal from. So she was like, we would touch on that eventually, but I just never made it that far. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, you're right. Well, maybe when you go into it this time, you'll have the heart as well. Cause I'm glad Absolutely. you I'm glad you started. You have yeah. to even give yourself that grace to say, I started. Yeah. That's good. So it's not bad that you, you know, you have to have different experience. And sometimes the first one therapist is not the, the one. It mm -hmm. just is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I think next time you'll be more intentional too about yeah. like, look, this is what I need. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this is what we need to discuss. Yes. Again, there's going to be recent things that happen because life happens. Let's yes. be honest. Life happens. I got to get it out. <laughs> yes. But we'll also make sure we come back and, you right. know, have Absolutely. a balance of both. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Yeah, girl. I'm going to keep trying. Though. I'm oh, not going to give up good. on therapy. Yeah. I think it's something that I really because i remember watching your podcast with your mom Aww. and y'all was talking about you know like therapy and god mm -hmm. and like i really think that's crucial like i mean yeah god can do you know he can do what is nothing that he can't do okay but i think he gives us those tools like therapists and, and resources yeah, exactly mm -hmm. so i'm like i i, I love having both yeah you know, and, and i think too i also go back when people try to test that i'm like okay well how about this faith without works is dead if you look at that so i'm like okay you keep praying you keep praying what 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 are you doing what's the action you're praying about and you're okay. asking god help me to change this but what are you doing and again i'm not necessarily saying Absolutely. you have to go to therapy for that but if you're not doing anything else either to try to Absolutely. get through what you're to process to actually sit with your feelings and give yourself Absolutely. a safe space what are you doing you Absolutely. know so Absolutely. yeah I agree. Good. I agree. well thank you for watching that too and i'm glad like it yeah, that yeah. part got you you know yeah. where you can like let me go. Let me okay. see. Okay. <laughs> it's good. So uh, Definitely. hopefully in your journey of finding another one, like hopefully it's good and it's somebody that you can feel safe with I to talk so. about that. I really it's good. So. I believe so. Yeah. I'm, I'm a key. Like I put it off for a little bit, but mm -hmm. I was like, I do need to go ahead. Cause like at one point I'm like, I'm kind of scared for them to 
really go deep and now i'm about to be unpacking all this stuff right. like but i know it's necessary yeah so always yeah. prepare yourself too if you know that you're going to talk about that that day prepare yourself to go into therapy even mm -hmm. if it's the night before having like a night routine mm -hmm. so you can um even have your points like because of course once you get to talking you can get into other things but at least mm -hmm. have your main point so it can be easier for you to be like okay i'm coming into this not blindly okay. Okay. you know so that might be good okay. too oh yeah. good i'm proud of you <laughs> i am you. okay so Thank let me you. ask this even okay. though you are going to find more skills and more coping skills yes. is there something now that you feel like has been working for you just to stay afloat you know when you mm -hmm. are having moments i will say writing like journaling is something that's helping me mm -hmm. um like i will and i've been doing this since she actually passed mm -hmm. is just writing letters to her um, like in my journal and just mm -hmm. telling her like about and sometimes i'll even write from what i think she would say to me um to, to get help, that response exactly mm -hmm. to help me out so that's been like a big thing Aww. like that i've been doing and of course you know prayer and whatnot but the journaling is definitely does something i've been That's doing good. yeah okay i'm Absolutely. proud yeah. and you said you've been doing that since since she has passed yeah so that's been a consistent mm -hmm. positive coping skill because yep. i know before you said the negative one because let me be honest that is coping mm -hmm. yeah drinking is still coping any mm -hmm. drugs any whatever that's still coping mm -hmm. but there's a difference between positive coping and negative Absolutely. because the difference will be the consequence mm -hmm. right so positive um coping is going to be the one that's actually going to get you through and and, and and it can actually make you feel good and mm -hmm. you know in either in the moment or even after yeah but the negative one's going to be the detriment like i'm doing this action but it's going to cause okay, something else to happen. Cost it. right i'm gonna have another consequence you from know? doing that you know <laughs> so again not in it but you have to understand you were young and so also giving yourself grace and saying yeah. i that's how i knew how to do it yeah. you know and so but now you say i know better i do better exactly so that's good yeah i know that if i'm feeling sad the drinking mm -hmm. I can't. Yeah. I can't. You don't. <laughs> Good. Okay. So even wrap it up though. So even with how did you get into content creating? Was that also something that you felt like? Oh well, like you said, writing was a thing. But mm -hmm. did you feel like content creating helped you stay busy, distract you, or did you just like it? So I would say both. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, it's something I've been wondering. Like I said, since I was like in high school, yeah. like I was always filming myself. Mom mm -hmm. got me a little camera. I'm always filming myself doing something. Yeah. Um, and so it's always been something I did. And then lately it does help with like, I guess like as a distraction, mm -hmm. um, to keep me busy, to mm -hmm. not necessarily think about it yeah. or whatnot. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you ever share even your experience on your platform one you day? Know, sorry, I've never actually thought about it, mm -hmm. but that's actually really good. because <laughs> you, I'm only saying because I know you get though. vulnerable with other stuff, <laughs> yes. right? So I think, and maybe maybe when you're doing therapy, maybe when you find a therapist and you're actually allowed to process it in a healthy way, yeah. and have a safe space. Maybe after when you feel like you're more in tune yeah. with yeah. your feelings about it, maybe that could be a that's you know something. A that, good idea because you don't know how many how many is. you got a thousand followers that, and by the time that happens, you're gonna you know <laughs> continue to keep growing because you're you're being yes. consistent. And again, like I said, I'm very proud of you for that Thank for you. being consistent. You too. Thank that's you. Like you inspired me to keep being consistent. Oh. I, okay. Girl, I'm trying. I'm trying to get back to it. I'm trying to get back to it. Okay. But yes, I think too, like, I think it will be something that's to help because you don't know out of who, how many people you're going to have, how many subscribers mm -hmm. who is dealing with the same thing you are right. at the same time right, you are. Right. And I had to remember too, a lot of times what stops me is, um, feeling like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to mm -hmm. say this. I don't want to have to talk about this or mm -hmm. why do I owe it to anybody? But a lot of times God will convict me probably the next day and say, okay, but I'm taking you through stuff as a testament you go through the test to have the For testimony reason, okay you got to share it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes i'm taking you through things so you can get through it and then after you get through it you mm -hmm. can tell somebody else that's going through it absolutely and can help them you know absolutely. so you just never know who you're going to help so i, I think that would be something to that's share the biggest thing i think we need to remember is when we go through things yeah it's not necessarily for the sake of us not it's, always it's to help somebody else like we'll get the lesson this. yeah we'll get the lesson but also it's for somebody absolutely, else too absolutely. right absolutely and you got to do what you got to do whether it's even being consistent on mm -hmm. youtube right like you don't know how your fashion content how your mm -hmm. vlog content how any you know your sit down content mm -hmm. you don't know what what is helping whoever absolutely. you know so a lot of times it is just being obedient and doing what you gotta do girl that's actually good though. i never thought about that yeah. but yeah i'm actually i'm gonna do that good. okay <laughs> gonna good, good, good. <laughs> okay so is there anything that you would want to say to the people again anything that's going through things that you have gone through anything that you would want to share with them before we end um i will say like for anyone who has like lost like a parent um or parents which i know that has to be tough yeah. um i would say like for me like i said my biggest well 
mistake I think was like indulging in like you know the drinking and things mm -hmm. like like you said the negative right. um, coping mechanism so I would just encourage you and you know to really not kind of go that route because at the end of the day it's mm -hmm. not really beneficial um it doesn't really help with anything if anything it just suppresses it and mm -hmm. not really deal with it mm -hmm. um and then I would just have to say like you know seek God for sure and then you know therapy is not a bad thing so, so definitely, we all need it yes <laughs> Definitely. So I think um, just having God and like therapy, like setting up for you this podcast um, is definitely something, you know, you should consider to pursue. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you. For Thank you for sharing. And like I said, like, I really am excited that you were able to even feel safe to talk about it. Like for the first time, yeah, like, again, we'll say that it's for somebody. <laughs> it's for some <laughs> But for the first time, actually getting it out. I'm very yes. proud of you all. But thank you for tuning in, you guys. Hopefully, you got something from it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all of it, okay? Let's have a conversation. And I know we'll put her social media. What is Desirable Beauty. Desirable Beauty. Mm -hmm. Desirable Beauty, okay? We'll put her on the screen in the um in the box. In the, what is it? The, uh... the description box. There we go, see? The description box. This is why I'm here. <laughs> In the description box, I'll put it in there uh, for, you know, her to also be included. And if you wanted to follow her and subscribe to her as well, okay, just to follow her journey, okay? Mm -hmm. But thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye.